G'day. My name is Michael Wentworth Bell, and I'm a 3ds Max user from Melbourne, Australia. The new Populate feature for 3ds Max was a big time saver for one of my recent projects, the cover artwork for Australian band Buchanan's debut album. For the cover, the band wanted a young girl framed by a large crowd of protesters. They had a pretty specific idea of the look of the crowd and the props that the crowd would be holding. So due to time and budget constraints, this crowd of protesters was not something I could easily do in camera and on location. Instead, new features in 3ds Max gave me the option of populating my crowd in 3D after I'd finished the photo shoot. Here, you can see the 10 rows of people that make up the crowd. To create this crowd, I laid out various overlapping idle areas, much like this. Um, I added in a few flows, and then I went to the modify panel and tweaked the settings to get the crowd to look the way I wanted. I just had to make sure that the markers um, shown here, blue and pink, didn't overlap. I placed a single polygon plane behind the camera, and I set the crowd to look in its general direction, with a bit of variation. Finally, I simulated 200 frames of idle animation. Now, manually creating the random placement and the variation required for a crowd of this size would not have been possible in this time frame. To complement the main crowd created with the populate feature, I added in a few hero characters with the 3ds Max biped system, loading them with motion capture files. Um, you can see the improvements to the Nitrous viewport help me accurately preview my animation. There's around 400 animated objects in this scene and it's orbiting around at, you know, 40 frames a second and it's actually playing back the timeline. As well as the populate characters and bipeds, each placard and gun had an animated noise controller on it too. Everything in the scene had to be moving so that there was accurate motion blur in the final render. And it's cool that you can get a bit of a preview of this in the viewport. The new 2D pan and zoom tool helped me to precisely place each of the props in my scene while I was looking through an enlarged version of my render camera. The cover will be printed on LP, so small details are going to be noticed. I synced all of my animation to frame 80 and then rendered the scene out row by row and through different cameras using state sets. I rendered with 4 seconds or 100 frames of motion blur in order to simulate the daylight long exposure effect. After my renders of the crowd were finished, I did my final composite of all the render elements separately in Photoshop. These features new to 3ds Max gave me the opportunity to create this crowd digitally and without the use of any third-party plugins, which previously wouldn't have been possible with the same time frame or the same budget.